said, if you get caught, you can see this big crap here today. You know, we love everyone. You want to back back? We got to the Bible in a minute, and uh, we have a major starter here today. You know, it'll be a good day for when we get started. And uh, we've been looking for it for a long time. And, uh, I, I thought, you know, I always like to say, you know, we we'll come. say it had the same love. I believe every one of us has been saved at the same love as God's love. But I know from experience, before you get this thing, that love from here is not like that love from here. When you get where God can use you, it is, it's, it's different. It's a different love. You start loving everybody. And I know how it is. You know, I, I, I was fortunate enough to go and we'll talk about this a little bit about that revival down there in a couple of nights. Uh, I've done a good job. I like what he said about, you know, he talked about the things that are done in the corner. And uh, you know, I sort of looked at that church we sat in that night, you know, and it, it had all the head corners was like his corner. But that said, Mrs. Bush would come right down through the heart of the church. So God didn't just come for this and this corner and that corner. He comes for whoever will. He comes for every one of us. And no matter your color, your skin, or where you live, it's whosoever will. And, will come. and I'm thankful it's that way. I like another thing he said that night when he got up. He said, either you're in the way or you're in the way. And I thought about that, you know. And uh, I thought about what Jesus said. He said, either you gather or you scatter. Either you're with me or against me. And, you know, and that's the way it is, this thing. And I know what it's like to be in the way. And I know what it's like to be in the way. You know, you might say, well, when you're better when you're in the way, you're going to have you do you better do something. If you're in the way, you know, and the people look at you and say, well, if he makes it, I'll make it to heaven. You know, and sometimes we'll, we'll, we'll get in the way, but, you know, the Lord gives us the opportunity to get in the way, and I'm thankful for that. You know, and I, and I thought to, you know, he talked, and he, and he went back first, and I he preached on that, shared that piece at the beginning of it. I don't know what that story is, those three Hebrew children, and how they thought first, and they wouldn't go on that music play, they wouldn't bow down to them. To his and, uh, boy, he, he, he told him, he said, he told him, he said, bind him. He got the strong man, bind him, and cast him before. He did that seven times hotter than before. And he was so hot, he when he threw him, he threw him in, he slew the one that threw him in. Old Nisha said, he went over and he went over and he went over and he went over and looked in. Like that back sort of told him, hey, look in. He said, we not just turn three in, bind three in there. He said, they forward. And he said they was loose from walking in the midst of the farm. And that's the way it is. Here today, but see, God freed them and he and I like that part where he said they was loose. He set them free. And he'll set you free here today. Amen. You might not have it there, you know, you might say, Oh, I'm, I'm free, I'm free, you might you might not you might be lost and yet you think you're free, but you're bound, buddy. You're bound in sin. And I know how it was when I was bound in sin myself, but he set me free. I'm going home to be with the Lord. That's what this revival is all about. It's, it's about getting us revived. It's about getting the church, but getting the law saved. You know, and I, I, I know this for, for a fact. If, if today, if the Lord gives you an opportunity to come, that he'll be the, the best move you ever made in your life. And you, you're not, you're not, you're never regretting it. I don't care. It'll be the best move. Not only be the best move, it'll be the best thing that ever happened to you. And maybe you say, well, you might, I mean, you might go on and have a job like Thousands and thousands of dollars. You might even make, I know I, I was listening to Judge Judy and she made like $34,000 there, so I don't know how much that would be. You know, that's 30 years. And that's just holding it for a lot of money, you know. But all that don't mean nothing if you ain't got the Lord. But what are you going to leave that? You're going to leave everything you got here. But better what you got the Lord, you know, and get it with you through our eternity. And that, so that, that's the reason we're having this revival. That's the reason the church is made here today. Of the law, so they might be able to be saved. You know, and I, I love every one of these, and uh, if I didn't know it's the right one to die, I know about that morning, 1982, seemed like a long time ago. But I come, you know, and but I thought God had saved my soul. And, you know, I thought about that prayer many times. I didn't know I said, Lord, I said, whatever you have to do, I do. And up to then, I hadn't, you know, when I said that, He saved me just like that. 
he'll do you the same way. And I've often talked to him, you know, how, you know, what the devil was going to say to you. And I thought about how he, he said to me, but he said, you're young, you got plenty of time. I'm 25 years old. God, he told me, you ought to come back on this Sunday morning to be a cry. Come back and say, there won't be many. But everything he told me, the life, I thought about what he tell these young people. You know, I tell you what he tells them, tell them just what he told me. So I'll tell you what I do. I live here. I've been from church for a long time. I can't sing none. But I live here and I go to Holy Hall and I be singing. All I sing is all oh, the red cross and all oh, you watch in the blood. And it's all sounded pretty good. But that's what we got boy, where I thought I was just, uh, you know, I felt comfortable in, in the house of the Lord. My boy, the one that wanted to come preach, God let me preach, but the old heart got a thumb. See, I've been, been singing the song and I've been fitting in and feeling pretty good. But you never know what I'm talking You better need to come. And if he made you to come, you need to come. Don't, don't fool him. Do like I did. Get down to my last chance. Well, that morning, I said, This is your last chance. You talk about a fellow in the point of rocking a horse, but I had to do something. You know, I thought I'd run out that door and never have another chance. But then I come up there and I didn't know if he'd save me. I didn't know what was going to happen. But I come, buddy. And when I come and I give him a turn, it all over. He didn't know what uh, uh, he didn't know what I had done wrong. He got everything out. He got everything. It's all his. But he wanted my heart, and I gave him my heart. And that's what you have to do. And I love every one of you. But we'll take up a lot of time, and uh, we'll give us a song. We're all coming to God. Yeah. 
whatever happens for David, whatever happens for David, I'm going to walk off from what I just thankful that uh, I've got a little black in the end on that's really young time. I'm, I'm, I'm not that old. Uh, I'm okay with whatever happens. Uh, even before we went to the doctor, I was okay with whatever the doctor said that he needed to do for David. And, uh, David was a little weary about getting that surgery done. And I said, what do you want to wait for? I said, uh, that's what the doctor said he needed. He's already prayed about it. So we're going to get this done and get you better. And, uh, so I'm just, I'm just so thankful. Uh, I'm thankful for surgery. I'm thankful for surgery. That God's going to take care of them And uh, I'm okay with having uh, two people down and down my family. Because I know God's going to take care of them. So uh, I'm just glad to be here. Thank you for the church family. I love you. I love people to hear that. They may be even strangers to me. I love you. 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 He'll have to draw those. Don't walk in and out of the pasture anytime. 
Oh, if you had it today, how I wish I'd think about it this way, having a, a mortar trail on one hand and maybe a sword in the other. And, and I, I think about working for the Lord and, and no matter what, I may come our way. But sometimes we get tired and, and we get discouraged and, and we just want to quit. But I don't think they want to show me a quitting today. When the Lord saved us, you know, I'd be all right. I, I'm serious. Uh, spiritually, or, or my soul speaking, I'd be all right if I never came up this road again. I'd be all right if I never mentioned to somebody what the Lord had done for me again. In my soul, I don't think I'd be all right. Well, I think it'd be a rough time for me. And I think I need to be on that wall this morning. I think I need to be spreading a little mortar right here. I think I may be laying a stone on that wall today. And you may say, well, I've never read that preacher. Well, uh, you might have been looking at my eye this morning. I thought I might read it, but I don't think I will now. I don't think I'll have to, but I, I thought about working for the Lord, and, and I thought about a revival coming up, and, and maybe some of them just think, well, it's just three or four more church services, but I believe it's more important than that. I, I believe it's for you and me, and, and I believe it's for those going up and down the road. I told them why I'm a man. I missed them. I held it. I was thankful that someone had a revival for me. I went out running up and down the road, and I'm concerned that when I was looking over and staring at the church, I'm glad somebody had a concern for me. I'm glad somebody was on that wall working for me when I didn't care. When I didn't care. And I'm glad this morning that, that, that the church has got a concern. And, and as I said, I believe a whole lot of you just got renewed in the Lord, been restored in the Lord. For, I mean, about the church's business. To be about it. And I'm thankful. And this is a little different. We've got some folks in here that's coming over to Christ and we needed Him. And I'm thankful that they did that business for us. Why? Because the grace needs to be mowed? Well, yeah, but because they had a desire to look at this place. And they had a desire for those that were going to come this week that uh, they might have a step put up this little bit for us. And, and I'm thankful for that and that desire. I'm thankful for them being on that wall. But I believe I'm also thankful for, for those that have been praying and those that's been calling out and, and those that's been inviting people to come this way. I'm thankful for those this morning. My boys, we're in a battle today. We are in a battle. What we have, I need mean, to get the sword. I need mean, to go get the shotgun. No, I need to go get my bazooka. No. I need to come out on my great high captain. And I need to be a praying to him for these that need it. These that need something to die. Something that I can't give them. I can read a little bit. I will read him a little bit. Ephesians, if you want to turn there. That name is chapter 6. In verse 10. And I want you to I want you to think about it this morning. I want to think I want you to think about who your enemy is today. Now I'm not your enemy today. I'm not, not any one of his enemy this morning. I'll be praying and I want to be in the trenches for you. As, as Brother Alec talked this morning in Sunday school, how, how we're one body, how, how we're uh, one body and many, many members. And, and you know what? Your, uh, your troubles ought to be my troubles and, and your cares ought to be my cares. And, and when you're dying, we're weeping all the week with you. And you all the week with me. That's the way it is when we all come together like we're supposed to. Yeah. I'm not the enemy this morning. Sunday school teachers not the enemy. Some way the pen prayer, the deacons. They're not your enemies this time. Because the preacher may get up here and, and read something or preach something that may dig you up a little bit. The first thing we want to think about is, well, he's picking on me this morning. Well, that's not the case of it. I don't know much about any of these when it comes to your personal life, but buddy, I'll tell you what, I mean, I get that blue cup and, and it gets me what I need to preach. That's where I'm going. Yeah. That's where I'm going. Yeah. Why's that? 
Because I know the Lord knows what you need this morning. Now, I'm not the counselor, but He is. He knows what you need today. More than anybody in here. Do you know that He knows more about what you need this morning than anybody knows about what you need? We may understand that you have a natural need of things. We need a gallon of milk down the road, that's how I remember. We've got a local way history. We know all that. But they don't know what you need spiritually. But I tell you what the Lord does. And I just want to be about this this morning. I just want to give out the words that, that maybe, maybe somebody, He would draw somebody to, to see that the error of their ways and He may get it. He's stuck with you. You don't have to worry about me. You don't have to fix it with me. But you don't have to fix it with you, Lord. And buddy, if there's anything between you and me, when you get fixed with you, Lord, I, you'd be tickled to death, but I'd be tickled to death for a joke. Or vice versa, or any way like that. Uh -huh. This is what you do. It says, finally, my brethren, this is chapter 6, verse 10. Be strong in the Lord and in the power of His mind. That's where I want to be. I want to be strong in the Lord this morning. I want to be strong in the power of His mind. How can I do that? Then where I'll be with you. And pray that we be shame on me. But if I want to be powerful in the Lord today, I've got to be about His business, don't I? Well, we got a revival coming up after a while. But we need to be powerful in the Lord. But we need to be about His business, don't I? We need to know who the enemy is this morning. I know these battles going to come, but I've already went in, as I said. And we win the war, but we've got the battle today as long as the Lord's got to see it. We've got the battle. Why do you just think hey, this morning like you all that? You know what I think about? And you may say this is so seriously. But I often think about not family like I would be a bad man. And those that may come through those doors and sit in this church. Maybe they just come one time. Maybe they just come once. And I think about not being on the fire line like I always. I'm talking about myself. I'm not talking about you. You'll have to answer the question for your answer. But I thought about it not being more all of that. And if there's no one that can in the door. And me walking out of fellowship or far off and then playing the part. How can I help? How can I help? And, and I think it's a man's nature, a woman's nature to, to want to help someone. Just want to help. And, and, and it disturbed me to think in myself that I couldn't be a help to her. I couldn't be a help to Now I can't give them a million dollars this morning, but I can find them that down I can't, I can't give them salvation today. But I can point them to a man who gave you a I can't restore that joy in your life anymore. I bet to them that they once had, I can't restore that. But I know a man that can restore those things in your heart and in your soul today. I know a man that can do that. And, and you know what this story The enemy is. This is put on the whole armor of God that you may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. The wiles of the devil. Nelson defines that as schemes. I believe he's schemed against everyone who's just to say by God's grace this morning. Not only did he want to see Peter's plea, but he liked to wreck your life and he liked to wreck mine this morning. And buddy, I'll tell you, it's, it's easy to do. He, I'm not talking about you losing salvation or anything. We know better than that. I know better than that. But I'll tell you what, he'll have you in a shape where you won't be able to help anyone. Yeah, he'll get you in that shape. And you'll be here this morning, and, and as we said, two or three Sundays in a row, I guess I can't help myself. But we'll be 
need to pray for yourself in order in order to be able to pray for somebody else. I need to pray for myself. I don't know about you, but when they come through that door, I'm going to be in the right spot. I don't want to talk eloquent like the bunch on TV does. And I ain't worried about my PhDs or anything like that. I want to be able to get in tune with the Lord. I might get in tune with Him and give His Holy Spirit draw those that need Draw those that need something in their life. Listen, before we wrestle not against flesh and blood, blood. We don't wrestle against each other. But it says, but against principalities and against powers. And against, listen, the rulers of darkness of this world. And against spiritual weakness and high places. I thought about that. We, we think about that high places. I don't, I don't wrestle against Joe Biden. I don't wrestle against the Supreme Court today. I don't wrestle against the, the legislature. But I wrestle against that spiritual wickedness in those high places. As our brother said, they took the law of God this morning in the Sunday school. And they passed the law that says that it's all right when it's contrary to this book. Now, if I say stuff like that, where does that put me with the Lord? I it ain't right today. If, if it goes against this book, I don't, I don't care if it's, it's something I, 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 I might think is right. If it goes against that book, I'll accept it as being wrong in the eyes of the Lord. Accept it as being wrong. And you know, this morning, the church is always here to the proclaim the good news of Jesus Christ. Is the church. We can't get it through a government statute or a law or something like that. We're going to do It comes through and not the church. Now, don't misunderstand me this morning. Now, those leaders up there in Washington, those in, in Frankfurt, we ought to be praying for today. That's our job. That's my duty to, to pray for them today. That they might do the same, the right thing. That they might align themselves with that book I've got right there. And not some other the true and living word of our Lord and Saints. That goes all the way from the book of Genesis and all the way to the book of Revelation. Because he's in every bit of that from the start to the end. And they say, well, you know, we don't agree with Jesus Christ and deal with the book of Matthew. No, I read of him a long time before that. I read of him before in the book of Genesis. I read of him in the book of Isaiah. I read of him. But I thought about me and you this morning. I thought about the battle that we may be in today. The battle. Yes, we went to war, but there's a battle going on there. And what, what will the end of it be? What we, need to, we need to be a praying for our lost folks. As the sister back there said, as the brother that come to church, we, we need to be a praying for those that, that, they might, that the Lord might stir them to, 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 that they have a desire that they come here. And hear the good news. And again, I think about myself. I'm a good example of a whole lot of stuff. Example of it. But I think about myself and how someone one day asked me to come to church. I didn't get saved that Sunday morning, but boy, I'll tell you what, I left there knowing exactly where he stood at. I knew that if I, if I die in this life, and in hell, I would leave my eyes. I knew that. How do I know that? Lord, up to you one Sunday morning. That's the second row, third. Over in the corner. No. You may be in a battle this morning. You're in a battle in your own home. And I, and I just probably glance at Jim for that. 
seems like we've been in a battle for the last few months. Been in a battle. Now, buddy, I'll tell you what I heard her say. And then pray. And the same thing that me and you ought to do this morning. Be a prey. Hey, the battle's coming. I know that it's coming. I know that it's going to come every day. I know that that adversary is like a, a roaring lion. He's come to steal, kill, and destroy. And, uh, that he might wreck each and every one of us. Wreck our lives. Wreck our witness. Wreck our testimony. He can do all that. And steal away the very sting of something. That's very seed that's not going to destroy. Be careful today. Me and you. We're in the battle this morning. We're in the battle. You know that wall. Sword in one hand and the trail on the other. Working. Ready to fight an enemy. Working in, our, working in our community, but no one. We're able to get things done. We're able to try to do two or three bad Try to rest before everything. It scares me. It may not scare you. you may not, it may not lock you in that place. But it scares me to know that how fragile that we are when we don't have our eyes focused on more. Very fragile. Brother John, I believe, said one son that we can't fight him on our own. Mm -hmm. You do. I don't care how close you think you will or how good you think you are. I'm not fighting That's a battle we're going to have a war with. You know, have that Christian manner going, that flag going. Hitting in that battle. With the good captain. It worries me. It worries me for myself. It worries me for you. And just how how close how close that we can be, but yet it seems like something still is going on. And we we're going to come into a revival this week. Lord's willing, about six o'clock tonight. And I'm here five hours and fifty seven minutes. And there, there's some of you that's in here right now that he'll put an excuse in your ear for you not being here right now. Oh, Richard, are you going there? I am. And you put an excuse for you not being here. Well, this being Sunday night, we got another pastor coming. He'll probably bring some of his church. There may not be any seats. Thank God these deacons and these good church members has already lined up a bunch of them. We've got some of them bold and terrible. We'll fold them out. Brother Mike had them open the windows the other night. We'll let them sit right out there. So let's not excuse this. Well, I got to do this. I got my Walmart trip. Yeah. There'll be a lot of them here. There'll be a lot of them. I'm excited. I'm excited for the revival. But you know what? There'll be excuses after a while for me not to be here. I don't know many. Add to the salad or something like well, that. Well, that'll get sick. I don't know. But I'm going to try my best that if it's the Lord's will that I'll be here, that I'm here after a while. That I'm here. And I'm supporting my church. And I'm supporting your family. And you're supporting my family. And I'm supporting those that's going up and down the road that, that may look over here and say, Oh, that bunch of slaves are right in there crying to bet you. Oh, they ain't going to be doing nothing. Somebody, I'm going to support them too. That, that the Lord may intervene in their heart somewhere. Was He intervened in mine one day? When I wasn't concerned, He intervened in mine. I hope He's intervening in yours right now. I hope you're dug up right now. I'm not going to try to grow or nothing or nobody else is going to grow. Let's see if you come back after a while. But you know, we, we preach Sunday, by Sunday night, Jesus told Peter that he denied him. And he heard that cry. Talk, 
I pray about seven, about seven fifteen, seven thirty this afternoon, or six fifteen. If you're not here, I pray you hear that call. Oh, I really do. I, I do. And I pray that the Lord digs you up right there where you're at, and you understand where you came up short. Yeah, yeah. It's all right. How many cars come on down the road? Ain't nobody here more than thirty minutes away, right? We'll be waiting here when we get here. We'll be waiting, right? Ain't for you. Uh-uh. I'm thankful this morning for a good church. I'm thankful for the men we're persecuted. That we still got the Lord's business on our mind. And when those out there persecute us, I will say, I, you don't know, have that much good for it, and that, this, that, whatever it may be. I'm glad that we still got our mind focused. No matter what you may say about Paul, we ain't good, we ain't much, but I still want to have my mind focused on what you need in your life. Because if you're lost, you need everything. That the Lord has to offer. You need Him in your life. As you said a few services ago, we had Curry Brock. There's one heard say that more than you need your next prayer. You need the Lord in your life more than you need that next prayer. If you're lost and undone, I was listening this morning. Hell is in trouble. He ain't going anywhere. You just don't burn up and it's all over. It's torment forever and ever and ever and ever. And you know it's not the Lord's will that, that uh, one would go. I love what he read this morning that perfect will. We've got a perfect will. And it's not his will today that not one would go. But that that all would come to repentance. And that's all that's in here this morning. That's Paul. That's Billy. That's Thomas. And all. It's your name. It's the Lord's will this morning that you would go. That you would go. So much His will that He left His home in glory. What will you do with that battle that you're in this morning? Well, I'm going to do my best to win that battle. It seems like too many times we turn around and have to retreat a little bit. We may read on the back how that there's no armor on the back. It's all on the front. What may you do this morning about the battle that you in? Are you meeting head meeting head on with the Lord as you kept him? Or will you turn him around? Will you think about after a while? Are you working up a good excuse now that you won't have to come after a while? Well, it's got to be a good one out there somewhere. I dare say a good excuse that not one of those going to you for a while. Not a good excuse. I mean that we're up there in the hospital. So I wouldn't want to use that excuse, but I'm up here doing my best. I still don't want to use it. I don't want that little, little thoughts that come in my head. I'm going to try to keep it up. What's your bad this morning? What's your bad? We got a revival coming out of the moment. We got a revival coming out of the moment. I believe I've already been in it for about 35 years. And I believe it's going to be even better. What's your bad? What's your bad? Are you in the bathroom this morning? Is everything went right over top of your head and you don't feel better? And in that shape, wasn't no level to it. Wasn't where the Lord would, not even within 50 miles of where the Lord would have you be. There ain't much of a battle if you ain't, if you ain't up next to the front of the battle. How are they? Y'all know what I'm talking about. I know you do. I know you do. But it ain't a battle every day, every hour, every minute, it seems like. When you, 
You're trying to do the Lord's will in your life. I don't know where you're at this morning. I'm going to ask you to stand. We got a revival coming out of your life.
I just been for the church this morning. It's all right too. It's all right too. Maybe it was for me. So I'd rather stay here and go. It's not as good. Or you know. Maybe it's for me this morning. Maybe it was for you.
saved, all hearts and minds are clear. We're having a revival this season. Starts at six o'clock. Okay. Sometimes we need repetition. Come up with a good excuse if you can't be here. I ask that you know you did. Dear Heavenly Father, Lord, once again, we're thankful for this opportunity to be in your house. Lord, I'm thankful for every battle that I've ever fought in my life. Lord, you've been right there with me. Lord, I can have you ahead of me, or I can do it on my own and have it behind you. Lord, I'm so thankful for your mercy and your grace. And we know it in your restoration, your revival, Lord. I'm so thankful. Lord, we're praying for this night's nice service. We're praying for those that are lost, those that are in here. Lord, we're trusting them. Uh, you'll meet with us. So we thank you. Bless every home is represented. All these favors in Jesus' precious name. Remember the request. Amen.